2017 in February. Now, when you run this sequence of events, what has driven the first cell to us right now in this park, to the birds, to the trees, all the living all organisms, organisms, is, is um, survival and reproduction. So, organisms have re they have offspring yeah. some of those offspring are different to the others yeah, and those which are suited different. for the environment are selected yeah. so the the driving force behind evolution is natural selection this is darwinian evolution yeah. now if that's the case and all of our cognitive abilities because remember i'm going by a pure materialistic point of view if you look at an, our neurology our, neuro our neurology is caused by natural selection. It's been selected for that. Meaning every single one of our traits, whether it's genetic, anatomical, psychological, sociological, behavioral, all of it of has to be explained via natural selection. Has yes. to be, we, we have to actually explain it via that mechanism. Now, if that's the case, then there's a big problem, which is not something I came up with. It's something that philosophers of science and even evolutionary biologists point out, which is Natural selection selects for survival, not truth. And you can survive on true beliefs and false beliefs. And under natural selection, it makes no difference whether a belief is true or false as long as it helps you survive. If that's the case, then our cognitive abilities, according to them, are not reliable. Uh, well, what, what we can say is, because we both agreed earlier that uh, humans have had quite a lot of success at yes. thinking cognitively, so we know what the outcome is. Just because we can agree that natural selection could have created a species which wasn't able to think reliably, we, we agree that that could happen. You could kind of like naturally select a, kind of a race which wasn't able to think at all, but somehow they were still kind of successful and they still reproduced. Just because we agree that could have happened by natural selection, we, kind of, we, we can look at the outcome around us and we can see that our species has had quite a lot of success at uh, thinking cognitively and uh, reasoning about our environment and making the environment better for ourselves. So we have some evidence that we are able, or at least some members of our species are able to think well and yeah, think cognitively and yeah. understand things. I don't disagree with you. The human species has been very successful. Yeah. The question really is, under a materialistic worldview or under a theistic worldview, what makes more, se more, more sense of this empirical reality, which is human beings are very successful at using their reasoning abilities. Now, from your perspective, if, if what Darwin said is true, if what Darwin said is true, then we have no reason to trust our cognitive abilities and our very existence and the fact that we can go to the moon and do quantum mechanics is a contradiction to the Darwinian worldview, not a confirmation. Um, but I, I feel like I've already answered this though, because you're saying uh, what, what we, from, from a purely Darwinian explanation, what reason do we have to believe that we can think cognitively in a reliable way? No, no, no. That, that's not what I'm saying. What, I'm making a, a, a slightly different point, a slightly different, which is under a Darwinian materialistic worldview, yeah. it is impossible to show that your reasoning abilities are reliable because you're only you're stuck between a, a rock and a hard okay. place. And I, yeah, I, I think I've got you now. Okay. But uh, why why do you need the Darwinian reasoning to provide that solid confirmation that you are thinking reliably? You don't. But if, yeah, if someone so believes like, in materialism, because we, they can. Because we can get it from like just looking at the other evidence that are what our human race has managed to do. No, again, we're, we're, we're back at the same point. I don't disagree with you that we both have reliable reasons. We don't disagree here. Yeah. Where we disagree is the origin of that. Now, from a materialistic origin point of view, it makes no sense. It's like squaring a circle. It's a married bachelor. Conceptually, it doesn't make sense. But, but from a theistic worldview, we were the product of a creator, and the creator is all-knowing, so we can trust our reason. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to us. What happens to you okay. doesn't to us. But how? Because there's no proof. Okay. Well, we've had gods that came before, you know, there was uh, Amun, Amunet, there was Ra, 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 and all their children in Egypt, they had 2,000 gods. Uh, now we know they was all false. You know, logic has told us, you know, and the same with the Greeks, you know, they had... No, but they had Zeus, no, hold on. They had Zeus, now we know none of the gods ever existed. So to believe in the god, 
it sounds like you're believing in something that's not true. Because okay. it's, it's been proven false. So where okay. is the logic in believing in a God when it's already been proven for all the yeah. generations okay. that none of them have been proven as true or their or their siblings? Okay. And you tackle um, him afterwards. Because the thing is, though, uh, I, I feel like your argument has given uh, a, a very good, valid kind of reason for why it could be that a uh, evolutionary process could create uh, a species that wasn't able to think properly. By the way, so you, by you, the way, you, you, you I, I didn't come up with this. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't come okay, up with okay, this. Okay, this is fine. something which. Even, for example, I'll give you one guy, Alex Rosenberg, yeah. he's a philosopher of biology, he's an atheist, he yeah. believes in Darwinism, but he realizes under that worldview, and he's trying to find a solution, he's trying to find a solution, but he's realized you can't trust your reason if this is true, so let me try and work up uh, some sort of solution. But you said that like, um, you said for why it could select for a, a species that kind of wasn't able to think rationally, because if that species survived, then and it didn't think rationally, then it would be a successful species which propagated. But if there was a species that was able to think rationally and it was successful, then it would also uh, propagate. Okay. So, okay, I think you so should use the term. There's not, there's not a contradiction between between thinking rationally and being a successful species. Okay, the, the, I, I just want to clarify what you mean. Do you mean to say that what they have come up with, which is, I'm talking about evolutionary biologists and philosophers of science, yeah. which is a a problem for natural selection to differentiate between survival value and truth value. Are you disagreeing with that or are you disagreeing with something else? Because I'm not sure what I, you mean. I, I, I think I'm, are you disagreeing I, with them or are you disagreeing yeah, with something else? I, I think I'm disagreeing with your interpretation of them because okay. they've said that a evolutionary process could create a species that kind of uh, was successful just because its survival strategies were successful, but it based wasn't on false beliefs, which yeah, is what they say. Yeah, yes, based on false beliefs, such a species could be successful. Yep. But that that isn't saying that it's um, that anything that's created from an evolutionary process will have false beliefs. Ah, because ah, it could okay. Be, because a, a thing yeah. that was evolved could have, um, you know, a true. It could yeah, have survived yeah. on. It, there could have been a coincidence of every single time there was a survival value. It also happened to be true. Well, we're only talking about the survival values that are, uh, ar arrive to us here today where like, we're trying to make sense of the world and uh, like, we're trying to see whether our logical brains are able to kind of uh, follow a logical argument. I, I think that's what you're saying. Like, uh, okay, but what, why I want to uh, clarify is this. When we're speaking about natural selection and evolution in the past, right? when we're yeah. speaking about the Darwinian mechanism, the reason why I'm saying could is, and the reason why they say could is because it's all theoretical. Yeah. No one observed, no one was sitting there on a chair watching the first cell become into us. Yeah. So when they, when we speak about Darwinian evolution, we're speaking about something which is a theoretical e explanation. Now there's a difference between a theoretical explanation and an actual explanation. So for example, a theoretical explanation could be, and this is something which um, some evolutionary biologists uh, did believe at one point, which was that males, we evolved to like the color blue because when we saw the color blue, it reminded us, okay, it's a good day to hunt, right? And it reminded us of the watering hole. And the reason why women like the color red is because meat is red and they need to cook and berries are red, so they need to pick them. And this was a theoretical explanation for natural selection. Now, what they discovered afterwards, and it wasn't actually much of a discovery, it's just a philosopher of, of science, Raymond Tallis pointed it out. Men liking the color blue and women liking the color red is a very European thing. And about 150 years ago, women actually liked the color blue, which is why we have Alice in Wonderland in blue, and men, red was a very fiery color. Uh, right. So, can, so all, all, all I'm pointing out, all I'm pointing out is this: the evolutionary explanations are better than others and have better no, no, evidence. No, 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 yeah. wait, no, 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 wait, wait, no, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Why I'm pointing this out? Why I'm pointing this out? Because why I'm pointing out is there's two different things here. There's a theoretical explanation and there's an actual explanation. Now, the actual explanation is inaccessible to science. Okay. The theoretical explanation, what you do in science is you take that and you test it. Yeah. So when we would be referring to reason and our reasoning abilities being cognitive, the reason why people like Steven Pinker and uh, uh, Alex Rosenberg and others, when they speak about 
why our human, our cognitive abilities are not trustworthy under a naturalistic uh, Darwinian paradigm is because they're running a theoretical thought experiment in their head. That's why they're using the terms could and would. Because remember, could is not the same as did. Could is, look, the theoretical is not the same as actual. That's why they do it. So if natural selection did create all of us, what we actually have to do is we have to take its explanatory predictions and we have to test them. And if those tests show that it makes sense, then it makes sense. If it shows that it's falsified, then it's falsified. Yeah. And me and you both agree, we are species. We are very successful yeah. and we're unique compared to the rest of all the living world around us in terms of our cognitive abilities. Now that is a contradiction to the Darwinian paradigm. Uh, when, when was the contradiction? The contradiction is that we both believe our reasoning abilities are reliable. Uh, but you haven't suspended your reason, have you? I haven't, but but like uh, the, the argument you put forth was for how it could be that a species that's evolved could have reasoning abilities that weren't good. It, it, like uh, They didn't say that a evolutionary process would create a species that had uh, false cognitive abilities. Well, it's all theoretical. They can't say it did. They can only say it may have. Yeah, so... And remember... So, so therefore, there isn't a contradiction there. Well, look, remember, look, put it this way, right? Both of these things are theoretical. Human beings can survive on false beliefs. Human beings can survive on true beliefs. Both of these are theoretical. Um, and what these guys are pointing out is there's no way for natural selection to differentiate between a true belief and a false belief. That's all they're pointing out. Uh, so, uh, a, but like, uh, I mean, you're, you're kind of conflating uh, two different concepts, I think. So you can, like, I, I myself, like, I, if I say that I was kind of, uh, I've evolved through natural selection, that doesn't mean I am natural selection, right? Well, well, what it means is your genetics, your anatomy, your psychology, your social behavior, and every single aspect of your thought is a product of natural selection, yeah. meaning it has to have adaptive value to help you survive and reproduce. Yeah. Now, if I can show that your genetics, there's something in your genetics, or there's something in your anatomy, or there's something in your social behavior, or your psychological behavior, which is not in line with natural selection, choosing it for a purpose, then that's a discrepancy. Uh, well, no, there, there, are some, there are some things that, uh, that kind of evolved by accident. Though. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. There, there, there are some things that evolved by accident, though. We can't say that every single, every single aspect of ourselves has some you know, evolutionary value. That, that's a that's a slight fallacy. Okay, but so it's like it's like like for example, our blood is red, and it's red because it has hemoglobin. But if iron produced a slightly different wavelength, like it was blue, it's not it, then then our blood would be blue. So it's not as if the color red itself helps us uh, kind of uh, be kind of successful. But that's just like a kind of a, a quirk. That's just like something that's comes along with something else. So okay, now not what, 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 you, what you're pointing of, uh, to? Part of information or aspects about ourselves has some evolutionary value. Okay, now let me just explain that in terms of the uh, the red, red blood cells that you were just speaking about. Every single, and I'm just speaking about this is pure Darwinism, right? right? Yeah. Darwinism doesn't claim we're going to explain some things and not others. The claim is we're going to explain everything. And what they basically do is this. Every single aspect, again, of your genetics, your anatomy, your psychology, and your sociology has to be in line with something which is an evolutionary product. Either it directly helps you survive and reproduce, or it's sent, according to them, an evolutionary hangover with no adaptive values. For example, the male nipples, right? Yeah, Sorry okay. to be crude, yeah. but according to them, they say this, this has no adaptive value today, but it's an evolutionary hangover of an adaptation. Yes. So either way, it is a product of natural selection. Uh, okay, There's nothing. Yeah, see, look, yeah, basically, said, look, that, look, look, look. If a dinosaur came, yes. if a dinosaur came right now, and you had an evolutionary biologist, that evolutionary biologist would have to explain him side by side with you the fact that he has a bigger brain than you, but he can't go to space and you can. He has to explain every single difference in comparative anatomy using 
natural selection. Now he can say this has adaptive value or this is a evolutionary hangover of a previous adaptive value, it's a vestigial organ, whatever. But he has to do it in terms of natural selection. What he's not going to do, you may do it, which is a good thing. What he's not going to do is say, I'm going to pick and choose and this I'm going to explain by evolution and that, that's a contradiction so I'm going to leave that alone. They're going to say no, I'm going to explain why that's an evolutionary byproduct and why this is an evolutionary adaptation. Okay, so uh, what, what contradiction have I left alone? Have I left alone some contradiction? No, you said evolution doesn't actually have to explain everything. But uh, natural selection does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when, when, because, because what I meant when I said evolution doesn't have to explain everything was because it sounded like you conflated kind of evolution with having uh, adaptive utility, like helping something survive better. Which, but, but we, we, we've, we've established, yes, there are evolutionary hangovers. So I think we, which are, we, which we've, are, I, we've, we've agreed on that position. Yeah, but, it's sure. but those evolutionary hangovers, what are they hanging over from? I mean, when you, when, I'm not saying you drink, but say if you have a hangover, the hangover's from alcohol, right? So when we have an evolutionary hangover, a non-adaptive trait, it is a hangover from an adaptive trait. All right, but no, you understand? No, no, not all, not all um, kind of, uh, not all kind of aspects. Like, uh, for example, vestigial organs, uh, like kind of uh, some some uh, like pythons have like little kind of uh, little fingers. So like before they were kind of lizards, then the uh, fingers started becoming less and less important and. Uh, it's like left over from something. That, that's one thing which. Uh, but see, of, but you see that was, what that was. That was kind of, sort okay, of unevolved okay, in no, some, okay. some respect. So that's let's look back at that example. When you're referring to that snake, that it has some evolutionary leftovers, right? Yes. And if previously it was walking. Yeah. Those legs, they were yeah, they had adaptive. Some use, yes. They were adaptive, yeah. right? So the, the, everything, even if it's vestigial, has to go back to an adaptation. No, there, there is another category of things that are like just uh, I know um, yeah get just happen and they aren't like they aren't important to uh, you're, like, you're, what you what you might be referring to is genetic drift yeah that there, there's genetic drift and there's also there's also like because remember genetic drift the people the Japanese scientists who published it the paper that was published it was called non-Darwinian evolution <laughs> so now we're getting uh, away from Darwinism. Uh, okay, but like uh, non-Darwinian evolution, even if you don't call it Darwinian evolution, it's still kind of an evolutionary uh, explanation. It's still part of the mainstream no, body of science. No, no, but remember, when we come to looking at anything in biology, the current paradigm is Darwinian evolution. Now, there are other evolutionary paradigms which are non-Darwinian. But uh, once you I, start doing that, once you no. start doing that, you have to throw away natural selection as the creator. Uh, the natural selection can only be a trimming force from then on. No, no, um, because gen genetic drift is something that's uh, accepted by all kind of mainstream geneticists. Yeah, of course, of course it is, yeah. And they, they would agree that kind of Darwin was still kind of basically correct because they aren't at odds. Well, because we could, because like gene uh, an example of how genetic drift would happen would be say kind of you had um, a, a sort of a population of a hundred people setting sail to an island yeah. and uh, along the way it's a very harsh voyage and by chance like uh, kind of the waves turned over like nearly all of the boats and there's only kind of one man left with like 15 women and that, that man survived by chance and now there's only his kind of Y chromosome will populate all, so, sorry, all the people in that. Sorry, I didn't think girls in speaker's corner. Sorry, sorry, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, and then uh, his, his Y chromosome will populate yes. all the people living there. Yes. But it happened by chance. It didn't happen because there was some adaptive uh, value to it. Right. Now, that thing that you're referring to, that thing is invisible to natural selection. That's why we call it genetic drift. It can just drift. Yeah, but it, the, it, it, kind of, it kind of produced the same effect sure, as natural sure, selection. Sure. It's as though it kind of he had some lucky kind of or some. It's as though he had some superior genes which helped him survive the, yeah. the storm. Yeah. But really, he didn't. It was just like luck. And yeah. yet, and yet, he still achieved the same yeah. end result. So, as what you, <laughs> genetic drift is something which Darwin didn't know about, which neo-Darwinists, the people who put together genetics and Darwinism, they didn't know about. And Masatoshi Nai is a Japanese scientist. And again, these are all evolutionary biologists and atheists. He, because of, uh, uh, because of the problems with Darwinism, he's seen natural selection no longer as a creator. He actually has tried to replace it with a completely new paradigm, which he calls mutation-driven evolution, right? Yeah. Now, genetic drift is not something that you can use to confirm the Darwinian worldview. If anything, it's a contradiction. And what he basically says is this, whenever you look at any trait that, or, or any field, okay, whether it's biogeography, fossils, paleontology, 
what evolutionary biologists tend to do is say, why is this? Because natural selection did it. Because natural selection did it. And what Masatoshi Nai says is this. He says, what's the difference between saying God did it and natural selection did it? He doesn't believe in God, by the way. But he says, what's the difference? Because they both are, when you make a story like that, they both are unfalsifiable. So, that's according to you. So, when, when you come up with, say, a model to try and explain something, unless you can falsify it, that model is wrong. 